In this video, I'll show you how to install and run VS Code in your browser with CodeServer. CodeServer runs as a Docker container, allowing you to run VS Code remotely, providing a code editor from anywhere you may be. It also offloads tests and compilations to the server you're running CodeServer on, allowing you to take advantage of high-performance systems. In this video, we'll be installing CodeServer on a Synology NAS using Container Manager. We'll also enable remote access to CodeServer using DDNS, port forwarding, and a reverse proxy. Let's get started by first ensuring that Container Manager is installed from the Package Center. In my case, I've already installed Container Manager, but make sure you have it installed as well. Then I'll bring up FileStation and create a CodeServer folder under the Docker shared folder that will be used for persistent data for CodeServer. Next, I'll enable SSH by bringing up Control Panel, Terminal, and SNMP, and enable the SSH service. We'll need to SSH into the NAS later in the setup. Now I'd like to set up a DDNS hostname that will be used to access CodeServer remotely. To do this, I'll bring up External Access, then select DDNS. Here I'll click Add and select Synology as a service provider. I'll add in a hostname I'd like to use and click on Test Connection to ensure that the connection is working properly to Synology's DDNS service. I got a status of normal, so the connection is fine, and I'll click OK to complete the setup. Next, I'll set up a Let's Encrypt certificate that will be associated with a DDNS hosting. This is done by bringing up Security, then selecting Certificate. From here, I'll click Add to bring up the Create Certificate wizard. From this window, I'll leave Add a New Certificate selected and click Next. I'll select Get a Certificate from Let's Encrypt, enter the DDNS hostname that was just set up, enter in an email address that I'd like to use, and under Subject Alternative Name, enter in a star or asterisk followed by the DDNS hostname to create a wildcard certificate and click Done. Now I'll bring up Container Manager from the main menu, select Project, then click Create to bring up the Create Project Wizard. Here I'll give the project the name and set the path to the folder that I created earlier. For source, I'll select the Create Docker Compose.yaml option and paste in this pre-configured YAML, which I'll include in the description below. Next, let's ensure that the Docker Compose.yaml file is set up properly. For PUID and PGID, You'll be able to get that information by SSHing into your Synology NAS with the account you would like to use for the code server setup, then run the id command. In my case, I'll use 1026 for the PUID and 100 for the PGID, which is what I already added to the pre-configured YAML file. For TZ, enter in the time zone you are in. For password and sudo password, Enter in a password you would like to use, and because we'll be setting up CodeServer to be accessible over the internet, make sure to use a complex password in your setup. For proxy domain, enter in the reverse proxy domain name you set up earlier. Under volumes, if your setup is different from mine, make sure to enter in the path of the CodeServer folder that you created earlier. Lastly, under ports, I used 8443 as the host port number but make sure to use one that isn't being used by your Synology NAS in your setup. Now I'll click Next. Next again on this Web Portal Settings window, and click Done on this Summary window to create and start up the project. While the project is being built, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content. At this point, CodeServer should be up and running, so if I bring up another browser window, and enter in the IP address of my Synology NAS, along with the host port number that was set up to access CodeServer, I'm able to access the container. I won't log in just yet because I want to continue with setting up a reverse proxy using the DDNS hostname and the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate that was set up earlier. So back in DSM, I'll bring up Control Panel, select Login Portal, then click Advanced. 
Here I'll click Reverse Proxy, then click Create from this Reverse Proxy window. From this Reverse Proxy Rules window, I'll give the Reverse Proxy a name. Under Source, I'll change the protocol to HTTPS. For Hostname, I'll enter in a hostname that takes advantage of the wildcard certificate that was set up earlier by adding code server to the beginning of the DDNS hostname that I set up. For port, I'll enter in 443, which is the normal SSL port number, and enable HSTS to ensure that access to this hostname always uses HTTPS. Under Destination, I'll leave the protocol as HTTP. Enter in localhost for the hostname, and enter in 8443 for the port which is the host port number that I use in the docker compose.yaml file for the code server container. Next, I'll switch over to the custom header section and create a WebSockets header for the reverse proxy rule and click Save. Now I want to make sure that the domain name that I entered using the reverse proxy setup is associated with the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate that was created earlier. To do this, I'll select Security and Certificate once again. Now I'll click on Settings, find the domain name that was added when creating the reverse proxy rule, and set its certificate to the Synology DDNS hostname that was set up earlier, and click OK. I'll then click Yes on this pop-up window regarding restarting the corresponding services. The last step is to create the port forwarding rule on my router. Here I've set up external access on port 443 to forward to the corresponding port on my Synology NAS. Now if I bring up the browser window that I loaded CodeServer in earlier and enter in the reverse proxy domain name that is set up using HTTPS, I'm able to access the CodeServer container. Here I'll continue with setting up the container, so I'll enter in the password that was set up for CodeServer. From this window where it is asking if I want to trust the authors of the files in this folder, I'll enable the box to trust the authors of all files in the parent folder config and click yes I trust the authors to trust the folder and enable all features. Next you can choose a theme you want to use and I'll select dark modern for my setup then click next section. At this point, you can run through the Learn the Fundamental options to learn about the essential functions of CodeServer or select Markdown to start using CodeServer. One last thing I want to confirm is that CodeServer is externally accessible, so if I switch to use my iPhone's mobile hotspot and refresh my browser, I'm able to access CodeServer perfectly fine as well. Hopefully you got CodeServer up and running, and if you have, let me know how you are using or plan to use CodeServer in your projects. Also, consider checking out some of my other videos listed here on screen. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work or hire me for a project you are working on or hope to implement, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.